We've had so much going on this morning. We really have yet to get into the numbers that are headed our way here today. And while everything seems to be somewhat in the shadow of the Fed chair, Jerome Powell's speech from yesterday, we've got jobless claims, we've got personal income and spending, and especially with the wage data, this is the kind of number where if it comes in above or below expectations, it can be, well, much like Powell was yesterday. It could be a, a mover for the markets for a preview and a look at the currencies ahead of the numbers headed our way here in just about five minutes. Let's bring in Bob Iaccino, the founder and chief strategist of Path Trading Partners. Bob, Bob, great to see you again. And as always, well-dressed uh, to impress, as always, I can see. <laughs> hey, let's get into a look at the currencies before we talk economic data headed our way. But first, talk to me. What were your takeaways from the Fed Jerome Powell speech yesterday? Well, first of all, well-dressed from you is a high compliment. <laughs> ben takes one to no one. Uh, you know, the comments, I think, were, were parsed out correctly. One of the things that's bugged me uh, about the narrative post Powell's comments lately has been all the people saying that Powell has kind of changed his view and spun on a dime. The difficult thing for the Fed chair specifically is that they have very few speeches and they do very few ad hoc interviews just out of the blue, out of nowhere. Powell could have been changing his tack for a long time. And honestly, I think we saw it in the comments of the Fed speakers approaching the Powell speech at the New York Economic Club, specifically Richard Clarita. He was out there saying that we're close to neutral. Right. I don't think the vice chair says that without the expectation that the chair is in sort of the same, at least public stance. So I think he didn't necessarily spin on a dime. Market is certainly behaving, at least yesterday, like he did. Today we're getting a little bit of a pushback because there's still the other binary event coming up this weekend, which is that Saturday dinner between a couple of guys. I'm not sure if you've talked about it. But essentially what you're looking at now is the two main binary events that could turn the markets, the equity markets back up. One of them is out of the way. All right, Bob, he covered a wide range of topics. Any chance there's anything he didn't cover, anything new in today's minutes, or are there no surprises expected? Yeah, I think the minutes will kind of could potentially push the market even higher okay. if they were discussing a month ago that the data might be coming in a little soft. That's the thing we don't know. So his comments yesterday kind of took the steam out of the minutes, but it'll be interesting to see if they were actually discussing this a month ago, and it was just a matter of when is the Fed chair's next speech where he could kind of convey this to the markets, which I believe he did. Bob, let's talk U.S. dollar. It reminds me of the little engine that could. It was right up on to the 2018 highs this week. You could almost hear it saying those famous storybook words, but it's come off since in reaction to Powell's comments. Do you think it can? I mean, do you think it can make a new 2018 high before the end of the year? Well, you mentioned the PCE, and I think that's kind of critical. That's the Fed's favorite inflation gauge because the consumption part of it helps to kind of give the idea are not only wages growing, but are they spending them? Are they actually going to be able to drive prices higher? And considering the discount economy that we live in, what I've been calling for a long time, sort of the Groupon economy, it's a little bit of a dated reference now, but I've been saying that for a long time. When was the last time you bought something without a discount code? So we're going into kind of an interesting period because we had 29% Black Friday increases over last year, about 21% Cyber Monday increases over last year, but then do we fall off a cliff? Now this PCE number won't tell us that, but it'll certainly tell you what the mood of the consumer is from a pure spending perspective going forward. And when you mentioned the dollar, yeah, would we fall short by about 11 cents maybe, 10 cents of those highs in the dollar index? Uh, it's tough to see those now given the positioning of the Fed and what's been going on with Treasury yields as they start to fall. The narrative could now switch to, are we flattening again? Is that is it not the Fed that's going to cause a recession? Is it the flattening of the curve? So far, we're not seeing that flattening. So far, it's pretty Goldilocks. But overall, if you're going to put your money in a currency, a base it in a currency, you're going to put it in the pound? I mean, not after the warnings from Carney. Right. Are you going to put it in the euro? Not after the comments from Dregzy and right. Dre uh, Dregzy, Draghi <laughs> and the other ECB members. It's tough to put it somewhere other than the dollar. Yeah, I think that's why we've been seeing some of the strength in the dollar, and we've been talking about that here on the show quite a bit, is it's definitely, or it appears to be at times, directly correlated to some of the weakness that we've been seeing in the other foreign currencies. You didn't even mention you got the Canadian dollar, you got Mexican peso, multiple uh, foreign currencies hanging out near 2018 lows. Hey, Bob, we've got uh, 730 jobs data. We got wages coming our way here in just a couple minutes. 
We're going to take a quick break into the number. We'll gather some data. We'll come back out. Let's take a look at market reaction to it. We'll break it down for our viewers here on the TD Ameritrade Network. Bob, stick with us through the break. We'll have more uh, with Bob Iacchino uh, after this short break. Uh, more of the information you need about the market you trade and a look at the numbers right here on the TD Ameritrade Network. Welcome back to Futures with Ben Lichtenstein here on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm your host and we're headed into the second half of our show. And before the break, I was talking with Bob Iacchino. He's the founder and chief strategist of Path Trading Partners. Bob was kind enough to stick with us through the break. So let's bring him back and let's take a look at the numbers, Bob. They just came out. First, let's focus on the wages data. Looks like it came in pretty solid up on the day or up on the month, I should say, up by a half a percent of 0.5. And uh, talk to us about what you're seeing there in terms of market reaction too. Well, we saw an initial move lower in yields, and I think that's interesting. We'll probably see that settle out and come back to unchanged, which again, given the number, the numbers were a little bit better than expected on the headline. The interesting thing was, the core inflation data we get out of this number, 1.8% year over year, right around where the Fed wants it, plus or minus that 2% level that they're looking for. So, you know, again, when you look at sort of the secular shift from the, disc, from the normal economy to the discount economy, again, playing out in the Black Friday sales and the Cyber Monday sales, everybody looks for sales, everybody waits for sales, everybody does these hacks to get a coupon code in their email before they buy something. That kind of plays out. You kind of see wages growing, but prices not necessarily growing past a level the Fed can stand. This will probably, as the day goes on, be equity positive and medium term rate neutral. You know, it seems to be initially, at least for uh, the Dow and for the ES, they're trying to inch their way up a little bit here. Bob, our viewers are taking a look at the numbers here right now. The core PCE index coming in at 1.8%, uh, just below estimates of 1.9. The PCE price index on the year to year, 2.0% versus the 2.1. Bob, you know, I'm looking at these wages numbers and, and I'm feeling it's like, it's kind of like a double-edged sword for the market in some ways, right? I mean, ultimately we need higher wages to, to, well, possibly provide that next catalyst because tax cuts only go so far. Real wage growth, though, would, would help. Not only it would seem like, in theory, maybe the housing market and some of the larger kind of purchase items, but ultimately too much wage growth is going to mean higher rates, which in theory is a little bit of a headwind for the indices. Well, this is what I wonder. We've seen, as you mentioned, mild wage growth. And is that a good thing long term or a bad thing? Um, I, I, wouldn't, I might argue that it could be a good thing. Where it's really hurt, as you mentioned, is housing. But if we get mild wage growth and we can get those longer term yields down, you might see high housing spark a little bit. It's definitely been the factor that's dragged housing down when you saw the 10 year note go from about 275 up to almost three and a quarter and sit there. It actually broke through three and a quarter and then came back off. If you get those 10 year note yields back below 3%, does that spark housing with a little bit of mild wage growth that we have been seeing? Again, we're not seeing it in prices. You mentioned the core PCE. That's the Fed's preferred indicator of inflation, down a tick from where it was expected. And then the actual PCE right in that 2% range. So that 1.8 to 2% range, again, slightly lower, lower than expected, right where the Fed wants it, along with a two-tenths beat on consumer spending. I mean, if you got these kind of numbers consistently, you'd have to own equities. Hey, Bob, the Fed chair yesterday said that rate increases could take a year to realize the impact that they have on the market. That is, has the slowing of True. the trend lower that we have been seeing in, in shorter dated treasuries, which keep in mind, we're leading lower all year. Has the slowing of this trend, the move down, signaled investors feel that the Fed will have to slow the rate at which they've been raising? There's a writer at Bloomberg, his name's John Arthur, and I read his stuff all the time. He had a great line referencing this. He said, bonds prove to be better than stocks again. Hmm. In other words, smarter than stocks mm -hmm. again, because the bond yields have been falling for quite a while. And what do we get? We get Jerome Powell saying maybe we're close to neutral. Or prior to that, he said, we don't even know where neutral is. Well, now he seems to have found it. And again, I don't think he decided recently that we're in neutral. I think it's been the data since his last major speech. He's kind of come in and pointed that out. So again, you look at those longer term yields and as long as they continue to move lower and we don't get an inversion of the curve, which is quite a ways off now, I think it's gonna be a pretty good situation for stocks. We've still got China. 
You've still got that yeah. all important dinner. Those are the two binary events. The biggest one that's US centric happened and it's out of our way now. Yeah, you know, Bob, let's talk a little bit about, continue to talk a little bit about rates here. This is why we're seeing rates which are holding key support right now. I mean, we, we've, you talked about how they pulled back a little bit, but they haven't really breached any major level to the downside right now. I'm actually looking no. at the TYX right now, still holding 3.3. Now, they may not necessarily be moving higher next year at the same rate that they had been this year, but they're not going down anytime soon either, right? No, I look, look, the S&P was down, or I should say was lower by about eight to 10% as we were all freaking out in fear of 3% tenure. And now we've sat at a 3% tenure for quite a while, give or take 20 basis points. Uh, but we've sat there and equities rallied. Now granted, we've had this correction. Uh, I'm not ready to call it a bear market, although we could be in one, we're still below. Well, actually we popped back up the 200 day moving average in the S&P, I believe. Um, I haven't looked at a chart to see where it is now, but you know, we're still in sort of this sideways pattern that we don't know if we're gonna get the next two and a half years of, of the bull market, or we've started a new one and a half to two year bear market, which is really about as long as I would expect a bear market to last, uh, given the strength of profits and the strength of earnings. Going back to the rate story and comparing it to what we just saw in earnings, we again had a really good earnings season, but this particular earnings season was different in that we saw of the companies that gave guidance, a full 68% of them gave lowered guidance. And that was the difference in this particular earnings season. It wasn't actually the EPS or the revenue beats. Those were still pretty strong. So as you point out long-term rates, the bond market tends to yield, or, uh, ye I'm sorry, lead, whether we're going to see inflation or not. And again, in these PCE numbers, we're not seeing them. So that 3% level is clearly not what the market's afraid of anymore. We don't need to get below 3% for anything except maybe housing. Bob, you covered a lot for us here today. I uh, really appreciate it. And again, you know, every time we talk about this stuff, I feel like we only get to scratch the surface. So uh, thanks for coming on this morning and sharing part of your day with us. I know Happy you've got here, many places you could be and you chose to be here with us. We appreciate that. Bob Iacchino joining us. He's the founder and chief strategist at Path Trading Partners now.